Now we're on to liquidity ratios. And liquidity ratios just tell you how well a company can meet its short-term obligations. That can be its short-term debts or short-term jobs it hasn't quite finished, like unearned revenue. And really what you're looking at here, and you'll see this pretty quickly, is you're looking at things that are really various things from assets to sales to things like that, profits compared to current liabilities. So liquidity is all about looking at current liabilities and finding out, okay, do we have enough money to pay those off or at least to kind of pay them down? There are three main ratios when it comes down to this. There's the current ratio, the quick ratio, and the cash ratio. And each of these three looks at kind of the exact same thing I just talked about. The current ratio looks at all your current assets divided by your current liabilities. And when you compare two balance sheet accounts like that, you can average them, that's fine, or you can unaverage them, it doesn't really matter. So if you wanna compare 2019 current assets to current liabilities, that's fine. And if you wanna also say, hey, let's look at the average of 2018 and 2019 current assets, just make sure you also do the average of 2018 and 2019 current liabilities. But the current ratio is just current assets over current liabilities. The quick ratio is your cash plus your accounts receivables, which you would think that you're gonna get quick cash from, divided by current liabilities. And that's just, once again, showing you are you going to have enough money in cash soon, because you're gonna expect to collect those accounts receivables, to pay your current liabilities? And the cash ratio is kind of exactly what it sounds like. It's cash divided by current liabilities. As you see, all three of these ratios are really focused on can we pay off our current liabilities? And so in theory, any one of those ratios that's less than one means that you do not have enough of assets to pay off your current liabilities. Now, that's not such a big deal when it comes to like the cash ratio, because if you don't have enough cash today to pay off your current liabilities, I mean, that's okay because you are expecting to get money through accounts receivables, you have inventory you expect to sell, there's other current assets you can leverage. All in all, those three types of ratios really help you understand the relationship in between your current asset accounts and your current liabilities. And remember, we kind of talked a little bit about this as well, when we talked about kind of working capital, which was kind of current assets minus current liabilities and their kind of relationship back and forth. And so really the way to look at a lot of liquidity ratios is what's your working capital look like? Does it look like healthy working capital? Or do you have a ton of accounts payables, which is a current liability, and you have very little cash or accounts receivable, AKA you're not gonna be able to pay your suppliers anytime soon. Those are the kind of things that investors and analysts are really looking at. The last liquidity ratio is a little bit different from those other three. You see, it's called the defensive interval ratio. And what it's really looking at is your cash and accounts receivables compared to your average daily cash expenditures. So it's really trying to show you how many days of kind of expenditures you have on cash in hand, or you expect getting cash through accounts receivables very soon. And that's kind of defensive because it shows that, hey, if you didn't get paid anything for 30 days, are you gonna be able to pay your employees, to keep the lights on, to pay your suppliers? And this is something that came up and was extremely important during the COVID-19 kind of period of the economy when a whole bunch of companies, like restaurants in particular, went from getting a whole bunch of revenue to no revenue at all. And those that had enough cash on hand were able to avoid kind of lenders taking advantage of them when it comes down to staying afloat. And they were able to keep employees on and to pay wages and to keep paying rents and things like that. But the defensive interval ratio does have a place in all analysis, but you have to understand that it's really kind of a worst case analysis kind of ratio where you really hope that this ratio never comes up. But if it does come up, uh, you're gonna suffer some losses in your portfolio one way or another. So does it really matter? I don't know. But we're gonna show you how to do it anyway. So there's two ways to go about calculating this. And like I said, the cash and accounts receivables is what makes up a numerator. And that's relatively simple to understand. You have your cash account, you have your accounts receivables, you add those up, boom, you're done. Now the average daily cash expenditure is a little bit different. You see, if you know your average daily cash expenditure, say you're a manager of a t-shirt shop and you know you pay your employees 50 bucks a day and you pay your utilities and they average to be about 10 bucks a day, then boom, 60 bucks and you're done. That's your average daily cash expenditure. But most analysts, especially in outside investors and consultants, don't know that kind of information about their clients or about their portfolios. And so what they have to do is actually look at the entire year and try to kind of back into this and say, okay, what's the total amount that they spent in cash that year and divide that number by 365. The easiest way to go about this is looking at all your operating expenses and just kind of taking out depreciation and amortization. Because remember, those are 
non-cash expenses. You're not really paying someone depreciation. It's just something that you take out and you expense it that way. So for example, it would be something like cost of goods sold plus R&D plus SG&A plus maybe some other of those weird operating expenses that are always kind of lumped into operating expenses minus depreciation and amortization. That would give you your total cash expenditures for the year. Then you divide that number by 365 days in the year and then you find out exactly what your average daily cash expenditure is and then you look at the ratio it's cash plus accounts receivable on the top divided by that new number that you just calculated and boom you have your defensive interval and remember this should be higher if you want it at least the safest companies are gonna be higher the more risky companies are gonna have low so if you only have two that means that you can you have enough cash on hand to pay two days worth of expenditures that's probably not good if you have 600 Mm, that's also maybe not necessary. I mean, who's gonna go 600 days without ever making another dollar? That's gonna be its own kind of issue. And so both of those have their kind of ways to look at it, but at least now you know that this ratio exists and what it's used for and how to go about calculating it. So those four are really the key ideas for all the liquidity ratios, or at least most liquidity ratios that you're gonna be using when you analyze a financial statement or a company. Now, liquidity is a little bit of a double-edged sword. Kind of as I alluded to, when it comes down to things like having too much liquidity, it means that you have too much cash or too much current assets on hand, and that should really be reinvested somewhere else to, to grow your company further. If you have too little liquidity, not enough cash on hand, that means that you may not be able to pay your employees and suppliers, which is also not good business. And so being able to kind of find where that good green spot is of enough liquidity to be able to pay everybody for a good foreseeable future, but not so much that you're just hoarding the money and you're not actually reinvesting it is kind of up to the analyst and up to the investor themselves. All in all though, now you understand kind of what liquidity is and how it looks. Liquidity is just one part of kind of analyzing the risk of a company. The other part is solvency. And those are the next kind of ratios that we're going to dive into right now.